And we're back live on stream for the Modern Easy Gaming Group National Paper Series Finals. We have John Wood and Kiran Manny in round two playing, uh, Kiran playing Blue White Control. John Wood with an Is It Tempo uh, build that you're mm. going to be looking at. Yeah, it's very interesting. Good to see the new sort of modern format emerging now. Is It Tempo wasn't a very big thing if you looked at it six months ago. Obviously with Modern Horizons 2 it changed the format quite a bit. So it'll be interesting to see how these decks come up against the other. Obviously, is a tempo getting an early creature on the board and taking down uh, blue-white control before it gets to control its creatures. So we'll see how they, they tackle each other's... Look at that, coming down to the Celestial Colonnade, the creature land. What kind of creatures does it turn into? That's a 4-4 Vigilance Fly, I believe. But it costs like six men. Okay, but still, <laughs> I mean, that's not exactly a bad creature to have, a 4-4 no, Vigilance Flyer. And those something. decks are very well known for going very late with a lot of mana on the board. Okay, is that... I believe that is a Steam Vents coming into play shot. That will come in shot. Oh, that was with a Scalding Taunt, so it was, it was searched for. It was a Sack Land into a So that means land. John's taking a damage. Yeah. Uh, and if he's and playing that in tapped, and he's playing, he's playing it, so that's see. 17. That's it. And the Dragon Ooh, Mage Channeler. Dragon Mage Channeler. Good start for John. No, the nice thing about the Dragon Lane channel, Channeler, the way that it's designed, is that... Oh, there we are. We're already getting rid of it with a prismatic ending. Very popular saying. card in Modern. We've absolutely. had a look through some of the lists and this has popped up quite a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. Very cheap uh, creature control, very effective as it can target anything. It doesn't just target a creature card. Sure. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying earlier with the Dragon Lane, Dragon Lane Channeler, the biggest effect is the fact that you can... Um, basically surveil the top card of your library so you can sure. actually look at the top card if you don't like it you get into your graveyard and then you just keep drawing which filters up very nicely with these type of tempo decks which is something they rely on quite heavily so what is that that John just played there? so that's a serum visions I think I believe it draws a card and then he scries two which okay. is very useful to set up your next couple of draw phases so Castle Ventures coming in from Kieran comes in untapped because he does control an island. That's it with the Hallowed Fountain. Oh, and then a Teferi, which immediately gets, gets counted. <laughs> <laughs> which is the right thing to do to Absolutely. any Teferi. Well, you have to, you have to. With the it Control deck, considering you have a significant number of counter spells, can't afford for a uh, Teferi to land on the field. Sure. So tapping that down for one minute to bring out. That's oh. a Ragavan, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like a Ragavan. And he's got two blue mana open, so I believe he does have a counter spell in his hand. He's going to be holding it up. So I think he wants to keep that Ragavan because the biggest uh, the way that this type of format or this type of matchup plays out is the early creature card comes into play and starts dealing a lot of damage and then counter spell to keep him alive. Sure. That's how the, the tempo deck sort of relies on winning this type okay, of so matchup. Okay, so again, trying to get rid of that Ragavan because, I mean, we were discussing off air earlier... Oh, hello. That's interesting. Draw a card and mill, oh, mill two and then draw a card. So I wonder what he's trying to get in with that. Unless he's just looking to draw counter spells and maybe just sort out his hand so that the next turn he can keep going. So it does resolve. Ragavan leaves the board, which is a good thing if you're the person getting rid of Ragavan. And that's it. <laughs> Nick has to take a call. <laughs> so John untapping, drawing his card for turn. That graveyard's already looking quite full, so John's already gone through a ton of cards, whether it's been played or oh, expressive iteration. This is a this is a card right now. This is an absolute brilliant addition that came through Strixhaven with just the card advantage. Sure. Uh, two mana to put one to hand. Basically put a land into play, considering you don't play a land that turn. Yep. And uh, putting one in the bottom. Absolutely amazing card advantage. Um, we haven't seen that type of card advantage in a long time in, in Magic. Yep. So, no surprise that it's become basically a staple in red-blue decks. I mean, we saw it yesterday. It was all over the place. It was a major player in the two Jeskai Ascendancy decks that went to top eight. Definitely. So, a Ragavan on the board. I believe that's the one he exiled, so I think we'll have to see if he has another land in hand. I think he was hoping that the top three cards had a land in hand. There we go. So shocking that in. Taking his life total down to 15. 
And now, will he play that Ragavan from exile? Yes, he will. Yes. Unless, of course, it gets counted. So he's got three mana open. I think he has... I believe he has three or four cards in hand, which, um, as we were talking about before the stream started, the biggest uh, difficulty with the blue-white control is to keep the card draw going, sure. considering you have to have so many cards to get rid of creatures. Correct. So, as you can see, this is a deck is basically planned to put two quick and small creatures out into field, into play, so that you can um, just keep the aggression going. Yeah. Forcing the, the blue-white control to have that wrath or something like that. Okay, so this is the little, this is the artifact that allows you to look at your, li it. your opponent's library and then draw a card at the beginning of your next upkeep. At the beginning of his... His next upkeep. upkeep okay. Yeah. Or if you, obviously if you do it in his turn, it'll be your upkeep. Sure. But yeah, the, the next, next upkeep. upkeep. That's it. Gotcha. So yeah, and the biggest thing is zero mana costing spell. It helps you go through your deck with the Dragon Rage Channeler. Okay, so this is, is... very amazing. And Lurus, I believe... Oh no, he won't be playing the Lurus one. No. Mostly because of the color of the spell, the mana. But um, I do believe there's a red and white deck that plays the Lurus. So this was a fetch? Did that fetch cost him anything in terms of life? Uh, I believe so. It should have. Should have cost him one. And so I think he did search for a basic land. He went for an island. So the nice thing about this, I uh, can't remember the name of this card, but you can basically get control of one of the creatures. Yeah. Oh, he decided to draw two cards. That's interesting. Okay. That's it. Archmage, Archmage's Charm. There you can go. get control of a one mana costing, I believe, creature. And uh, the nice thing about this type of matchup is having it in, in play, uh, you can basically just take over the uh, target non land permanent converted mana cost of one less. So you can get control of one of these one mana costing sure. creatures. As we can see, the Chalice of the Void coming out, which is a huge hit if it lands. Uh, but now it's come out at one, so it's countering all one mana spells. That's it. So obviously the one mana spells in his hands are not going to be very helpful. And uh, I believe only Prismatic uh, Command, I believe it is, is the only thing that can get rid of artifacts in his deck. Whether he runs it will be the other question. No, not there. One, does he run it? Not seeing no, it in the main board. Like it. So Not he might have side. quite a bit of difficulty getting rid of that chalice. But obviously he has the two creatures out on the field. So as long as he keeps them alive, I think he has a very good chance of taking Kieran's life total down quite quickly. Sure. Another expressive iteration from John. Costs two, so it bypasses the chalice. That's it. Again, but I must be honest, Expressive Iteration, for what it does at that mana cost of two, is, I mean, that's just a broken spell. It is. I don't think it's broken, but I think it's very, very good. Um, considering the meta, meta went out away from red-blue for a long time, I think it's actually a very nice addition to get that sort of colors back into the format. Sure. Which is very nice. So obviously, as you can see, put one card in the graveyard due to the um, Dragon Rage channel as a Correct. Ability. Obviously, filtering, as you can see, the filtering with the with the instances and sorceries is very useful. So another Ragavan goes into exile. That's it, but he won't be able to play it because of the chalice. So it'll be very interesting. I think he maybe just put it in there to get rid of it, considering the other card was probably also not very useful. Considering sure. He put it at the bottom. That chalice does create a bit of a roadblock for him. So swinging... So I believe that's three from the channeler, unless there was... So the only card that can get rid of the chalice is the one he doesn't have. It would look that way. By the looks of it, I don't think uh, he has anything that can get rid of the the chalice in the main board. So something's just been exiled and a treasure token has been made. That's from Ragavan. That's it. And I think he's taken five damage five there. Five damage on that attack. So John, John goes to ten. No, other, no, way. other way around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, maybe I should have had a coffee instead of a Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh, actually, looking at it, uh, he has an Engineered Explosive. I think that might be able to get rid of the Chalice. I can't remember Correct. Engineered Explosive. Correct. Yes, it would be able to. Got rid of colorless cards. So, Engineered Explosive. Engineered Explosives. 
And it's been interesting because he's only got a one of that type Sacrifice of Sacrifice Engineering Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Engineering Explosive. Okay, perfect. So it can actually get rid of it. And considering you can see the Engineering Explosive is in play for zero without any counters on it. So I think that is the plan to probably get rid of the Engineering Explosive end of turn. Well, get rid of the Chalice. The Chalice, sorry. Yeah. You're right. Can John block that Engineered Explosive um, not once I it gets... I don't think anything in his deck has a can counter abilities. Yo, yeah, I don't think he's got... He doesn't have like a... It was, there, was a there was a spell that could stop... Counter... Counter activate abilities. Active abilities. But I don't think he's got it in the deck. So if it does go off, it will take care of the chalice. No, that's it. So as we can see, the nice alternate Arctic... Uh, what's the name? Supreme Verdict is coming down. And in response, John Sachs, the engineer explosive, gets rid of the chalice. No, that's it. The board does get cleared though. A very interesting back and forth in this game, which is actually very good. Doing some more drawing. Kimpa Kumpan says we missed a surveil trigger when engineered explosives was cast. Oh well. <laughs> was it a was it a May or was it a <laughs> The question is did we miss it or did he miss it? <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I think we may have missed it. Yeah, I think the, the speed at which this is a deck moves is very difficult to be able to say everything. He's For actually sure. playing it very well and very quickly. Another expressive iteration. That's the third one we've seen in three turns. That's it, hey? And it's you can see how much that card advantage just digs through that library so quickly. For sure. I mean, like I said, we saw it play a huge role in the Ascendancy decks yesterday during Pioneer. John passing the turn back to Kiran. So looking at this board state, obviously looking very good for the blue-white control. So can I just quickly just jump in and say thanks for joining the chat, Kimpa Kampan. Really appreciate it. It's first time chat from that, from that particular viewer. So thank you for the comment and thank you for watching. Okay, that's stupid, but why does he have two graveyards? Uh, I think he's just using it to see uh, one you'll separate for instances and sorceries and other one for non instances and sorceries because the one creature he has in the main board when it comes into play he exiles instances and sorceries from his graveyard making that creature big and also reducing the mana cost of that creature so sometimes the players like to keep it some sort of visual representation of the graveyard so then they know how many cards they have in the graveyard how many they don't I'm just going to sound the alarm bells. <laughs> Big Teferi on the board. So I believe that is Big Teferi being cast. We'll see now if he has the counter spells in hand. We haven't seen any any response from John. Looks it like resolves. It That's, That's a big play. Huge advantage for Karen there. time on the round thing sticking up here <laughs> i've only just noticed that now let me get rid of that for the for chat hey what's going on here Hello. yeah so the powerful thing about teferi is obviously the untapping of land enabling uh, to have the player have four mana at the end of turn which enables so many uh counter spells and considering the board state as it is now looking very good for kieran the longer the teferi stays the more card advantage absolutely gets. So this will be very interesting to see how John can get rid of it or um, sort of get under the counter spells to keep going. For sure. First time chat from another viewer, Urba1. Hello, hello to you. Welcome to chat. Thank you for watching. But yeah, I mean, with Big Teferi on the board, we've got to say that Kieran's kind of... And that's it. And you can see John, the, the, obviously the life tokens don't matter because John realizes the card advantage from Teferi and... It's just too difficult to get back into it. Too game. much. So that would be a victory for Kiran. Over there. And then we reset our life titles over here. This mouse has decided that it's only going to move at snail's pace. I may have to change <laughs> the DPI setting. But there we go. Can we move? Do you guys think it's better to like give in when you know you're gonna lose versus try and fight it out? Well remember your rounds are time. So you've got fifty minutes per 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 match. What you don't want to do is spend a lot of time trying to find a way back into a game that you're probably going to lose when you could move to game two get win there and then go into game three for the to win the match you know what i mean so it, it just makes more sense that if you if it looks like you're going to lose rather just scoop and move to game two yeah um, to be honest is save the time that you have remaining to use for the other two games exactly because the longer you spend in this game the more time you spend on the round where you're not going to get a win because yeah. these decks especially with control decks it's normally very much a uh, a slow paced game when it gets to a certain point, the 
controlling player just has so much card advantage, so much control, counter spells that the other player just can't get back into it. Yeah. And as the, I mean, these guys know their decks really well and they all know the meta pretty well. So you'll know at a particular point in the game, if your opponent has this on the board and you don't have an answer for it, you even pretty much know you've lost. Hmm. Yeah, I think these people play uh, practice rounds all the time with these type of decks against the other decks. And they see that once they get to a certain point with a certain amount of board pressure or whatever the card advantage the other opponent has, yeah. they just know, they just can't. I mean, with three expressive iterations and he was still sort of down with yeah. card advantage. So Uber1 saying, I just started playing this game, uh, still a little confused about what everything does. So if you've got questions, by all means ask them, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, I, I have been playing for a while, I wouldn't say I'm a great player, but Nick is a seasoned magic player. <laughs> and Nick will be able to answer questions much better than I can. Um, we also, Mia. Mia, we also have Mia with us. She also doesn't play magic so much, I think she's played one game. But her <laughs> hubby is playing here today and so she's joined us on chat to, to also try and figure out a little bit of what, what it is that her man does. <laughs> 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 so by all means, ask questions, we'll do our best to answer them. But here we are going into round game two. I always get like the game match thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yes, it's like game yeah. two match, well, match round two <laughs> thing. I'm gonna go get some coffee. <laughs> In that order. Exactly. I'm, that's how I'm stacking my chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But oh, modern so, uh, is a is a huge format here in SA. It's probably our most competitive format. So you are going to see players doing what we just saw, which was, listen, I'm not going to be able to win from here. Scoop, let's go to game two. I've got a better chance of winning game two and pushing this to a third game in the match than I do of actually winning in this first game. So no, let's just move on. But isn't, isn't modern like misnamed because it's not the current cards, it's older cards? See, this is when I started playing and people were saying they were playing modern. I thought exactly the way you yeah. did. <laughs> but I think that's what Ryan said. He's like, it actually, it's older cards. Yes. Yeah. So modern goes all the way back to so from the current standard back to eighth edition. Eighth edition. Thanks, Mike. So modern allows you to play cards from the current standard all the way back to eighth edition. It's not modern art. <laughs> Where Pioneer, which was the format yesterday, allows you to play from the current standard back to Ravnica. Yeah. Yeah. The original Ravnica block. Oh, no, 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 not no. the original. Uh, Which Ravnica? Guilds of Ravnica. Return to Ravnica. Return to Ravnica. No, no, no. Is a it? Ravnica block. Yeah. I came up for it. <laughs> Something to do with Ravnica. Something you would have to do. It doesn't have the fetch lands. It doesn't have the fetch lands. <laughs> to that Ravnica. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, there's standard, which is the current five sets. Yeah. That's it. Um, so, so that's what they're called. So you've got standard, you've got pioneer, you've got modern, then you have legacy, which allows you to play just about everything. You've got commander, which also allows you to play everything. Um, and the, what are this pauper? So many formats to magic. What do you do when you play an X? Money, there's, there's vintage. Okay, hold on. Here we have a question from Uber One. What do you do when you play an X in the top right? How many mana do you use? That's your choice. You decide what the value of X is. And X can be any colored mana, any non colored mana. It's totally your choice. Um, but that will then impact what the rest of the card says. So the card will state uh, something happens where X is this. That's it. To the value of X. The X value is your choice. It depends how much mana you can spend on it. Yeah. Could you so. minus X minus X? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that answered so that. Okay. Basically, you want to basically look at how much mana do you have and how much can you spend on it. And if you want to use all your mana to spend on it. Sure. So it is uh, as much value as you want. Yeah. And then, obviously, the effect of X. Yeah. And then, as you know, the more you play and the more cards you see, you'll see X has many different... Uh, effects so some cards have multiple effects with X being certain number and some just have a single effect for an X spell there we go hope we clarified there so going into game two both players keeping there wasn't a mully that I saw okay there is a mully so that's the one is that a four card hand a five card hand two three four five six six cards so it is a one mully one mully an automatic just going for it straight away Sacking a land. Taking the one damage. Probably I assume. searching for the shock. So going to 19. I thought X was 10 mana and 10 damage. No. <laughs> <laughs> X, X is a variable value. Yes. So X can be 10 mana, but the damage can be dependent on what type of card it is. So I just have to delete a message. I really dislike it when people do this kind of stuff. 
I don't want to spammers. reply, just delete, go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't like spammers. Okay, and then shocked it in and played it straight away. So played a down to 17. So he drew a card and scribed the top two. And from the other side, we have a polluted delta. I was going to say it looks like a polluted delta. Just a sack land. Ragavan coming in turn two. So is Ragavan this John Wood's main card? Because he played it so much in the first one. Yeah, Ragavan's a big yeah. card in this you deck. You have four big creatures that are in this deck, which you have four, oh, sorry, three big creatures in this yeah. deck, which you have four of each of them. The one is the Ragavan. It's one red, a two one. And whenever it attacks, it uh, exiles the top card of your opponent's library and gives you a treasure token. Um, so there's Ragavan. That's Ragavan. Um, also having ability to dash, so you just pay it for one extra colorless spell and it comes into play and, and gains haste and then also returns back into your hand. Yeah. So it's a monkey pirate. He's a monkey pirate. He is a monkey pirate, cool. yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's a, white, a furry white monkey pirate. That's it. The other one is the Dragon Rage Channeler, which is can also... You, can't you only have one legendary creature? No, you can have one legendary creature in play. In play. Oh, so you can have four in your deck, but, but you can have one in play. I think we're saying goodbye to Ragavan. So this prismatic ending is coming into a huge help for Kieran, yeah? I Again, think this is the third one he's played in. Absolutely, the, the, we did speak about it, as I mentioned off air, we did say this is going to be a big card in the format. Most definitely. Fits into many different archetypes, many different colors. Yeah, for sure. But also, again, just getting rid of the threat of Ragavan and what it's... <laughs> <laughs> and as we were talking about it, another one comes into play. Another one hits the ball. Okay, for those of you in chat, we don't like them spam things, so if they do happen to land, we generally either delete or ban whoever it was <laughs> who did that. So just ignore the deleted message. <laughs> <laughs> also, want to just uh, quickly give a shout out to Foxglove Lass for dropping her metagame breakdown on Modern. Uh, Modern is not a format that I'm very familiar with, so having a look through that this morning was very, very useful. Um, if you guys are at all involved in any of the Easy Gaming Group WhatsApp groups, you can probably find a link there somewhere. Um, or I can pop a link here in the chat for everybody to go and have a look at that. Uh, what just happened? As we can see, he's playing, uh, I believe that's Celestial Purge, which exiles a red or a black creature. And I think he's sacking uh, his uh, sack land to search for another shock land, so he's going to take a little bit more damage. And uh, I believe he's obviously doing that because he has some sort of counter spell in his hand. Okay. So, so he's John. taken. He lands counter permanence. Uh, yes, they do count as permanence, but a lot of cards will have non land permanence as a target. So it is a permanent, yes. Okay, so going to look for something. So he's milling two to draw a card. So obviously, he doesn't have the counter spell for. The Celestial Purge. Well, now he doesn't have the mana to be able to play it. So, Ragavan, another Ragavan bites the dust. That's it. Yeah, I think the, the, the blue white control relies heavily on just getting rid of those creatures that land on the board because the longer they stay, the more advantage uh, the Izzard control deck, uh, sorry, the Izzard tempo deck gets. So, this is very interesting. Both players have now sort of gotten stuck on the lands that they do have, the Izzard being on two lands and the Blue Eye Control being on three lands. The Izzard player doesn't really mind too much because he basically just mills through his deck to get to his creature cards. Sure. Where the Blue Eye Control wants to have his lands because he wants to have more answers and he wants to be able to play a Teferi and have a counter as a backup or something like that. Sure. I just closed the deck list window. <laughs> like I said, more coffee. So just putting in that damage that John took off of the Shockland, so 2013. Okay, question from Uber one again. I have a question, I saw someone playing MTG, he combats someone, and after he does it, he summons a creature, how does that happen? So you get your phases in a turn, so you've got your uh, untap, upkeep, then you have your first main phase, your draw step, then your first main phase. Then you go to combat, then you have second main phase, and then you have your end step. So after combat, there is a second main phase where you are able to play sorcery speed spells, which is casting creatures, playing down enchantments, things like that, uh, before you move to your end step. 
Correct. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are your instant speed spells that can happen. But if you're saying that this happened after the, turn the combat phase, then it was in the second main phase. That's it. So as we can see, the, there was a small Teferi, three minutes Teferi that tried to come into play. Obviously, it was countered. Or, uh, my apologies, it was uh, bolted, I think, down. Definitely bolted. I would bolt it to Teferi 3. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, it's what I would do. Okay, now we need the judge to come and sort this thing out again, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the setup that he's created for that thing. So if you want to just keep chatting, I'll be back in a sec. Here we go, find me a judge. Okay, so looking at the game, it's going down fairly as expected with sort of a, a slow tempo to it. Um, obviously, that's not very good for the is it tempo player because he needs to have that damage on the board. He is not a, a long-term game player. He doesn't look to have planeswalkers. He doesn't look to take this game to the long. That's it. So obviously now trying to push his third Ragavan in. Which is very good. And let's see if it sticks the board. Obviously, the control player has quite a bit of cards in hand. So I think he will have an answer for it. But we will Got see. Got lots of mana open as well. So so he's definitely not struggling. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. And pow. So let's see what it does. Does he want to draw? Does he want to get... Oh, so he's doing the draw ability. Maybe he doesn't have the counter in hand. Does um, Magic have a hand of Yes, seven cards. Seven cards, and less specified otherwise. Yeah. So you could have cards that reduce your hand size, or you have cards that increase your hand size. Like there's a really horrible card called Jinga Taxis, yeah. which says that all your opponent's hand size is reduced by seven. But then they lose. Yeah. No, no, no. You only lose if your library is reduced to zero. Yes. So, so, they have to like so your hands. It literally, it literally yeah. means that at the beginning of your, at the end of your turn, you have to you discard, have to discard to down to zero. That's it. It's a terrible so, card. Chalice of the Void was attempted to be played there. I believe it was for two mana. Well, we saw how much damage and that did. I mean, well. that were, were kind of a sort of not damage, but definitely a, a sort of a wall in front of John's game last game. Definitely. So getting rid of and that. And I was is lucky essential. to get that engineered explosives, considering he only has one of them. Correct. As you can see, a rest of peace coming down. That's mostly just to get rid of the library. Um, therefore, that big uh, Merfolk Riptide, I believe it is, yep. cannot come down. Because I do not believe is that Temple will ever get to that amount of mana. <laughs> Just shifting out the way, so if you come say hi, can now. Our judge can help us out. Cooler in here, right? Eh? Yeah, I'll do so. Ah, okay. Okay. Stun the thing again. Stun the thing. Oh, goodness. I think you got it wrong. I think it was John who played the, the chalice. And Kirin will fight it back with his first game. Last no, first game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll <laughs> So is that a chalice of the void attacking or is that being cast? I've never seen a card sideways before. Oh, I believe that was stolen with the Ragavan. That's probably what, what is it. Which is actually very lucky. I think John is very happy with uh, exiling a, a chalice just so he doesn't have to deal with it. Because obviously the, the control player will not have access to that chalice now. Yeah. Because it's out of his library. Okay, we have our deck lists back. So the interesting here would be to see how long this Ragavan can stay into play. Because the interesting thing about Ragavan is um, if you keep taking the top card of your opponent's library and you keep taking the planeswalkers and any other big control spells or permanent spells, it can actually just turn your deck into a blue white control deck. Sure. So that'll be interesting. How many times does Ragavan attack? Because I we believe have it's only one. Just the one, so one okay. treasure token. Alright, cool. Just wanted to keep an eye on those life totals. Kieran tapping loads of mana for Big Teferi. Will That's it stick? Really good. John does have mana available. That's it, so we'll see. I'm pretty sure he brought in some counter spells. Because but it looks like Teferi resolves. Oh, Teferi resolves. That's interesting. And that was what killed the game last time around. That's it. That's what ended the game quickly. So we'll see now if he can get rid of that Ragavan. 
Of course, on the coming turns. Beginning of his end step, because of Teferi, he gets to untap mana. That's it, untap two lands. Very helpful control deck, considering you need extra mana in your opponent's turn to stop whatever he's doing. Sure. So I just wanted to jump back in here. And and just casting another expressive iteration. Share this out to I'll chat. No problem. So I was mentioning the metagame breakdown. There's a link for those of you who want to have a look at it for the modern metagame breakdown. Prepared by Fox Oh, Cryptic Command coming down. Countering the expressive iteration and allowing Kieran to draw a card. And then another fetch land. So John will take one from cracking that and we'll have to see what he decides to pull onto the board. Just a basic. Beautiful full art John Avon Island. He was in hospital the other day, did you know that? John Avon. But apparently he's fine now. That's good news. Yes. Yes, he had a, an operation of some kind. So attacking Teferi for two with the Ragavan. So Teferi goes down there and then a bolt to get rid of that. Oh, they, that was a good play from John, getting rid of the big threat of Big Teferi as fast as possible. Kieran looking to obviously now figure out a new strategy for attack against John. Passing the turn, end step. Is that a fetch? Are we fetching or just a draw? I'm not sure what that card did. Expressive iteration for John. Is this going to get counted? Can't see what card that is. Mike, can you do you recognize that card? Some form of counter spell. Unfortunately, couldn't see what that is. It's Mystic Dispute. But. I think it's there. No, it's not, is it? No. No, okay. no it's not. No, okay. Right, so we, I, I missed what card that is. I'm sure we'll pick it up next time around. Uh, we can have a look at the deck list. Maybe that can tell us. Uh, it's not a spell pierce. No, it wasn't. It is what it is. It was an ether gust. Thank you for that. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, he would have sided it in. Mm -hmm. Killer part three double oh nine. Imagine commentators not knowing what cards are. The draw earlier was from the fives. I did uh, make my disclaimer earlier. Modern is not a set that I'm familiar with, <laughs> so I will uh, I will have to wait for Nick to return before I can have a better a better um, idea of, of some of the cards that are being played. No problem. I'm just here. I'm just here to keep the chat going. <laughs> We're very excited to present live magic again. Okay, so turning that uh, land into the big flying creature, 4-4 four, four flyer, so 4 damage to Kiron, uh, from Kiron, sorry, to John. John goes to 8. 
So glad you're watching Killerbot 3009. Appreciate it. Is a heavy cost to turn that particular land into its creature side, but I suppose when you've got the mana to do it, you go for it. Four damage flyers, big. Correct. Create other flying creatures or creatures with reach. Oh, and vigilance as well. That part I didn't know. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> it is a good card. Yes. Again, same move. Another four damage. John goes to four, which means that if he does get to untap, then that could be game. Oh, and Little Teferi is going to get Force of Negation. Is that Force of Negation? There it is. There we go. Nick's back. He, can, he knows cards. <laughs> I just talk. <laughs> How has it been? Killerbot3009, give me, give me uphill about not knowing card names. <laughs> 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 but I explained my situation. There we are. And, there and we are. We're, all, we're all on good terms. There have been two swings from Kiron with the uh, Creature Land. Oh, wow. Okay. Taking John down to four life. So unless John has an answer here, I'm pretty sure that's game. Uh, yeah, and at the moment that Teferi will not help. So because, Jace comes down. Sorry, the Jace, you're right. Jace will come down. I do not think he will be able to do much against the creature land. But I do believe he'll be using it to draw, trying to look for that answer. And considering it is a four power, t uh, four toughness creature yep. land, uh, it's actually very difficult for the Izzet Tempo uh, controller to be able to get... Uh, to get control of that land. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here. And, and that's I a scoop. That's a scoop. So Kieran takes the game 2-0. And that is the end of round two in the modern finals here at the Easy Gaming Group National Paper Series Finals at the Nexus in Johannesburg. Uh, we will return. Should we check in on table two and see what's happening over there? Uh, if we do and you see the overlay, the overlay won't change immediately. Uh, so we may have the wrong names, etc, etc, but let's just see if the game's still going. Looks like something's still going on on table two. Uh, I think there might also be an end of game and they're just having a nice thoughtful discussion between the players. Does look like it. Looks like Ryan Uren over there on the left hand side. Yeah, it looks like that game's also over. So we'll jump back there. Okay, we'll be back really soon with round three. Don't go away. We're streaming the whole day. We've got another four rounds of Swiss before we cut to top eight, uh, which is going to be ridiculously cool. So stick around and we'll catch you real soon.